Greetings there, my fellow loot hoarders, Rodamon here, and thank you for tuning in to Rad's Guide to Project Zomboid. Episode 6, How to Scavenge. Can you take corpses out of the dumpster? Uh, if you don't delete them, yes. If you delete them, they're gone. And you can delete anything that way. Those dumpsters, you can just put whatever you want in it. You, you could put, you know, clothing or guns and just delete them. You know, if that's something you wanted to do. Another thing I should probably do is to move either that other icy to the second floor or take the ice cream out of that icy and move that upstairs as well. Oh my god, I need to muzzle him. He is just chewing on himself. I feel like, uh... The anti-anxiety pills that the, uh, the pharmacy gave you are all placebos. <laughs> Alright, I'm out of room, so for now I'm just going to use the freezers of the fridges. That's why I brought these up here anyway. I'll put the pickle in there too. Uh, the lug wrench and the gas can can probably go in the trunk of the car. Am I making this place my main base? Possibly. As this is a tutorial series, it is possible that I outgrow this building, but there's nothing functionally wrong with living in a building like this. So I might stay here or I might leave. It's all on a whim. I don't usually like to have my hands full of a corpse when I swing doors open like that, but I was pretty sure I was pretty safe. One last sweep here. I don't think I missed much. Well, these boxes, everything else in there is non-perishable, except for like a taco shell. Um, these shelves don't require a skill to move. And they're really good for storage, uh, in my opinion. They're, they're fairly attractive. They're very easy to move. Whereas things made of wood typically require uh, carpentry skills to move. These are just large metal shelves designed to be broken down and moved around. So I'm gonna move these metal shelves and then also the one in the um, utility closet area upstairs for storage so that I can start organizing things. Because if you don't get ahead of organizing things, um, it can get real messy real fast. Uh, another weird tip is you can equip the weapons or the, the shelves as like weapons to move more of them in one go. If I had a backpack that had enough storage, Actually, technically, my backpack doesn't have storage, but I'm over encumbered. Right now, I'm moving 60 kilos worth of large metal shelves. And it's only encumbering me 40 kilos because I have them equipped in my arms. I right clicked it and say, equip is primary, equip is secondary. The reasons not to do that is like, if I got attacked, well, I'm carrying shelving. I can't, it's not as quick to carry a, a crowbar, but it does allow me to move a lot of stuff in fewer trips. And you can do that with most large furniture items. Is equip it as a um as like a item. Now what I can what I need to do to be able to set them up is to put them in my inventory or to unequip them as a as a being held and then I can place them. So I'll place them on the back wall. Oops, not there. Line them up nice. Now a lot of the furniture in this room can also be broken down at some point when I get around to it, have the tools to do it, so that it, um, this area just look, physically looks nicer. And I also think it's somewhat reasonable to consider um... To consider uh, 
So if I had the carpentry, if I had carpentry two, because so there's there's two ways to remove access to a second floor, and this is a second way. So one, I typically like to settle into warehouses which are made of metal, which means that you cannot remove flooring tiles because they're made of metal. Uh, they're not a carpentry skill, but because I'm in a um, grocery store, there is an added benefit here, the, a weird added benefit, which is that the the flooring tiles are carpentry based. So if I had carpentry level two, I could actually just remove the floor out from under the stairwell. So I don't require a um, a sledgehammer to actually secure this building. I just require carpentry level two and I can just remove the floor so that there's a hole there. And if, if done, if I remove these two tiles, there's physically no way to access the second floor um, because Anyone climbing the stairwell will just fall back down into this room here, this office space there. So, um, that's one of the big reasons I've been looking for that carpentry book. I could start to try to grind my carpentry skill without finding the associated training book. Um, but what I will tell you from personal experience, it is quite the boring grind and not worth doing. It's way easier in my opinion to find the book and find the tapes. And if, if, if I found Carpentry 1 and read it, and then found at least one woodworking tape and watched it, I would be at Carpentry level two in a day. If I started breaking down this furniture right now, I could spend a week breaking down furniture without the XP bonuses before I hit level two. So it's orders of magnitude faster to, um, to just, um, you know, level up your skills efficiently than to grind away mindlessly. And I am not about the mindless grind. If you are, cool. If you want to spend 10 hours breaking down furniture, like, power to you. So now if I want to start organizing things, I can hit this category here and sort it. Sort all my items by category and then pick them up and shuffle them away on these shelves. And there's one more shelf downstairs that I probably want to bring back up. And that will give me six different high volume um, places to store things, which is nice. So I'll put my books in the farthest corner here, all of my skill books, which includes magazines. And I do have a duplicate metalworking magazine. I can already tell that. And any duplicates here, if I expand this a little bit and drag this uh, uh, out a little bit, you'll see this parentheses two means I have two copies of it. Because it's a magazine, it weighs almost nothing. I don't care, but that's uh, that's how to tell. And all, all these menus are draggable. I just don't like them to take up too much real estate on the screen because uh, it makes it very hard to see zombies. So before it gets too dark, I want to go move that last shelving unit up because once it gets dark out, I don't want to interact with the downstairs because that's not what a beginner would do. The last shelving unit is here. I'm going to dump everything on the ground. And if you're wondering, the... Um, there's very few items that uh, will be removed periodically over time from dumping things on the ground. So storing things on the ground might not look attractive, but it is safe. Um, the only things, don't quote me on this, make sure to look it up, but I believe the only things that typically get deleted from the ground are things like hats, helmets, glasses, uh, basically face, face items that can be knocked off of zombies. Like, like handkerchiefs and, and um, bandanas and hats and things. Uh, because when you fight zombies, those items can be knocked off of them so that they're periodically cleaned up so that your world is not populated. Like a, a, a late game world doesn't have thousands of clutter items uh, filling up the save game file and also filling up the server. Um, but everything else does not get periodically deleted like that. Only like face accessories. Um, so everything over here is not a facial accessory, meaning everything over here would not be, um, swept up and, and removed. 
All right, so the next shelf I want to do is clothing. And there's some items in there that I don't even really want. So here's some spare clothing. For like cartography and maps, notes, things like that, I, I typically put them away. So the clothing that's in here, I'll take out and sort that correctly, as well as the books. I might have some duplicate books as a result. I don't think I do, though. And I probably want to move those filing cabinets away from that back window, because that back window is not a safe place for me to stand. Uh, anyway. Nope, these are all novel, non-duplicates. Good. Didn't mean to move the garbage bags. Uh, the next shelf might be construction stuff. Like nails, screws, etc. If I have anything of that ilk. The lug wrench and the empty gas can probably needs to go back into the... Um, into the car. I will move matches in there. What is a construction item isn't always necessarily easily apparent to new players. Um, and then we're also going to do like a shelf of weapons. I'm going to move the meat cleaver and the frying pan into the kitchen though, because it's more of a kitchen item than like a weapon. Even though it could be used as a weapon, it's not ideal. Uh, so ammo, rounds, spare weapons, and the like. And we'll put that in the closest shelf. How much brain does this game need? Brain. If you don't have brain, you're a zombie. So, I suppose you could approach the game as a zombie, but I would not advise it. What else is there a lot of? So let's move the kitchen stuff now. There's first aid items. Uh, food items can go in the kitchen as well. I'm going to have cigarettes as a food item. Um, all of these combo books and fun literature, I'll put in one of the filing cabinets and move the filing cabinet physically so it's not at risk. Um, so I will store the frying pan and the, and the uh, meat cleaver just on the stove top here and then things like hot sauces I like to put in the fridge um, I don't typically store perishables in the refrigerator because perishables are better kept in freezers because they will keep longer in a freezer but things like salt pepper, margarine butter, those sort of non-perishables that you might cook with, keeping them on a refrigerator close to your stove makes it easy to use when you're cooking uh all right, so let's do, let's get rid of the um, lug wrench and gas can. Before it gets too dark, because I'm getting tired and bored. And my car is over here. And then I also want to empty out everything out of the trunk here, so that when I'm out looting, I have as much space as possible in the car. Um, for storage. So the lug wrench is going to be useful if I have a jack to, to do maintenance on the wheels. And then the gas can, of course, for like siphoning. You can always siphon in other um, canisters, like in bottles or cups, but they don't hold a lot of volume, so it's way more annoying to siphon with bottles and cups. And then everything in the um, gold box can go as well, so that I have more glove box space. So... Uh, I suppose I should probably be throwing this stuff out that I don't need, just to tidy up. So the stuff on the ground here, I'm going to pick up and sort so that I'm not cluttering the floor. Some of it is useful, um, which I can just stick in these cardboard boxes for now. And then I would also say, like, the tire is probably going to be used very early on, so I'm going to set that aside on its own. So it's separated out. 
because I have some pretty bad wheels on that car, and as soon as I get a jack, I'm gonna want to put and a tire pump. I'm gonna uh, gonna want to put that tire on. Um, but I don't need glasses, so we can delete all that stuff. The orange soda, the, the pop, the the duct tape, all that stuff will be useful later on. The tarp, etc. I think I already have a wrench in my backpack, so I'm just gonna put this wrench away. And. Uh, the tissues I'll hold on to, and the garbage bag I'll bring upstairs. So now, this car is as ready to go as I can make it. It's been... Um, it's had its trunk and glove box emptied out, and there's nothing in the seats. It's fueled up as much as the fuel I currently have accessible to me. So, it's good to go. I'm going to pick up this trash can, this green garbage bin, and move it into that office area. Um, I'm also going to pick up the coffee maker and the microwave and do the same with it into the, um, the kitchenette area. I sometimes you just want to thaw stuff. Microwave's useful and... If I ever want to make coffee, coffee maker is useful. Oh, this is a really weird way to path to put that microwave away. I think I misclicked. There's the microwave. And there's the coffee express. Now this kitchen already has a trash can. Um, but I'll probably move this trash can a little bit closer to here and then move this trash can after emptying it out a little bit over into the office area. It's just very useful to have a, an, a, an ability to just delete stuff so that you don't get clutter. So I could leave that right in the door here. Because some of those items here, like this port disc I can dismantle into electronics. That will level up my electronics a little bit. Um, but I probably don't... Well, I can always dry myself with a bath tile, I suppose. And then leave the bath tile out to, to dry on its own. So yeah, let's just loot the rest of this stuff. I'm going to put medicals uh, next to the weapons. Which is disinfectant, tissues, soap, painkillers, uh, bandages. And then on this shelf, so these middle shelves are just going to be a catch-all. Until I have more storage, it's going to be a catch-all for, like, uh, crafting. So anything relating to crafting at all, like rope, twine, electronics, etc. Just load it all up in there. Um, on the weapons shelf, I'm also going to include tools, tools and weapons, because they're often one and the same. Like, a hammer is a weapon and also a tool. In order to make things like tea, you would need, um, mugs. So, keeping mugs is nice. I'm going to empty out the shelves of the kitchen here. Because a lot of this stuff is just junk I don't need. And I'd rather have the storage space for important things, because these are high, pretty, uh, pretty high capacity storage containers. They're 50 kilos each, and they're 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 movable if I want. Um, once I have a little bit more skill, everything is like carpenter skills. You may have noticed. And then I had mentioned wanting to move these filing cabinets somewhere away from the window that zombies can see me in. I don't want to be standing in front of that window, so I'll put one filing cabinet here. And this could be of um, fun literature. So books, comic books, magazines, things that you read when you're bored. Because I am getting a little bored, so I am going to quickly read one of these regular books. Um, one thing I have not yet touched upon is time controls. Obviously, there aren't really time controls for multiplayer, but on single player, you can accelerate time faster, 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 or 
Alternatively, F6 is complete the current task. So that is a time control that will zoom time forward very, very rapidly until you're done with whatever you have queued up. Like reading a book. Um, if zombies do approach you when your time control accelerating, it will slow down time, but not necessarily uh, enough time for you to react and survive. So, for instance, if you're sitting on the ground with your back turned to the zombie, the time will slow down, but maybe not enough for you not to die. And I also will um, uh, clear out, before I go to sleep, I'll clear out all of the clutter here and uh, store it appropriately. Just so that we're kind of clutter free. So the canned goods can go in the refrigerator. Um, I'm also going to put the maps in the this filing cabinet so it's like literature and cartography. And then most of the other stuff is just going in the trash. The extra pens and pencils. Unless you use a pen or a pencil as a weapon, like your John Wick, uh, they're not going to take... Uh, they're not going to take damage. And they're horrible as weapons. There is a caveat to that, which is um, you can stealth attack zombies with like a knife for like a, uh, a very quick, quiet kill. But it's difficult to execute and not generally worth the risk because if you screw it up, there's a high likelihood of it of you getting bit as a result. So it's not a maneuver I would suggest for the new players. Uh, the mugs here I can either put into the shelves, but I kind of like just the aesthetics of like setting them up um, on the countertops, which just look nicer. And then I can put the the canned goods in the fridge. It's just a it's just a sensible place to store food. Canned goods, canned goods won't spoil, but the refrigerators, as I've mentioned many times now, are not as efficient at storing perishables as freezers so it leaves me with a refrigerator that is often empty might as well put canned goods in there instead all right time to sleep on my armchair I really slept in. It's past noon. It's the afternoon. Um, spend the remaining time looking for carp one or carp vol one. Carpentry. I'll spell it out. Volume one. Now there is a because I don't have a lot of time left driving to like an uh, elementary school doesn't make a whole lot of sense but that would be probably my best bet to get carpentry volume one uh but given the time remaining uh it doesn't make sense to drive there and then run out of time in the stream so instead i can just look to the surrounding area so across the street is a motel um that is definitely not gonna have books on average can you read skill books out of order? No. So taking a look around, we have a church to my southwest. We have um, Jenny's Table, which is a restaurant to the northwest. To the north is a motel. Oh, there's also a zombie at her back door. So I'm going to go deal with that. Uh, so probably the best bet for me is to return to the residences to the south and search the bookshelves of the residences for the carpentry book that I'm missing. Oh, that's awkward. I did not mean to shove her back inside. 
she's not the only zombie around, which is why I'm putting space between me and the corner of this building. Because it's very easy to get jumped around the corners. Clear your corners and pie the rooms. So here, I'm employing the strategy of knocking one zombie over and standing on her, isolating her out of the fight, to then fight the other two. As you can see, playing it safe, playing it slow, I have effectively cleared out a huge swath of zombies in this area. Uh, my total kills would be found um, under info. So I've killed 68 zombies and I haven't been touched once. Which isn't like something to gloat about. But as a new player, that's not bad. So, speaking about new players, I did mention wanting to clear the um, residences to my south. Don't go through thick woods. You can't see well enough through trees to safely navigate them. So even though, as the crow flies, it would be fa faster to go through those woods, it's not safe. Um, if you are out of town, in the middle of nowhere, the likelihood of there being zombies in the woods is very, 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 very low. The zombie distribution, by default, is that zombies are urban-focused, meaning that they're in and around cities rather than um, out in the woods in the middle of nowhere. But... Uh, I am not out in the middle of the woods in the middle of nowhere. I am in a city, so walking through those woods would be a very bad idea. So here is that lunge attack that I was referring to. When zombies go over fences or through windows, they like dive on the ground and then lunge for your legs, which can scratch you, lacerate you, or knock you down. So it is not worth doing. Um, here is another map. Uh, Louisville map. So pizza lady, hot dude selling burgers, or our tent with some cuss words. <laughs> um, the tent, however, might have stuff uh, which was here. I have to double check the map. So it's worth noting that okay, it's in the south of that cul-de-sac. So it's here. So, what was the color scheme I was using? Blue? Yep, blue. Okay, so we'll put blue. And a note. Items. Holding E also lets you vault fences and the like. I don't really want to fight the, like, 10 zombies that are over by the church because that doesn't get me any closer to getting carpentry book zombies don't carry books on them so i am gonna head to the closest house it's also uh definitely worth searching the garages garages uh will often have better stuff than even the houses themselves the houses will have like books but garages can have very useful tools you know, they can have generators, they can have um, gas cans, jacks. Oh, and I broke that. So given that I broke this window, um, I can either smash the window or smash the door. The window is going to take a lot less effort, so I'm going to smash the window. When you smash a window, make sure to be holding a weapon in your hand. If you're not holding a weapon in your hand, you will likely hurt yourself. And then once you smash the window, you want to break the, um, remove the glass. And then, uh, and then you have access to it. So here's an empty gas can that I'm going to want. If I ever go to a gas station. And some spare wood glue. That's the only thing worth keeping, I would say. And then the noise of me smashing that window have obviously attracted this zombie here. So what I could do here in this instance is either open the window and let him out. Or attack him through the window and hit him. I just broke this window too, so I'm going to do the sec- the former. Which is to smash the window. Given that I just smashed this window, smashing this second window isn't really producing much more noise that I hadn't already made in the area. Um, 
And then let's search this house. And, and things that I want from this house, any of the tools on my wanted list would obviously be nice. Um, but also considering grabbing the curtains. So removing the curtains. There's two ways to remove curtains. You can remove a curtain and turn it into a sheet, which is more weight. Um, it's, it's weird. It's more weight efficient to do it that way. Or you can keep it as a curtain. The reason to keep it as a curtain is if you wanted to make your base look fancy. But because I'm just trying to add curtains to big glass windows, uh, I don't care about fanciness. A toolbox with a wrench in it. And washer dryer that are empty. And fresh food. Now, I live in a grocery store, so I don't really need to be grabbing food here. But a cooking pot is a very useful tool to make soups and stews, and as are bowls. So those are high-value high, high value items to be taken. That's a pretty depressing office. I have not yet found the bookshelf in this house. Not all houses will have bookshelves. Uh, it's also worth mentioning, and I never mentioned before, is uh, the world is static. So the other way to get a curtain, as I mentioned, is to pick it up like this. And I would get it as a, a small Bordeaux ca curtain. Um, but I'd rather just take it as a sheet. So right-click remove is taking it as a sheet. And then it magically converts it to a sheet. Sheets can't become curtains, but curtains can become sheets. I'm also kind of violating one of my rules. Oh, another spare sweater. Nice. And a baseball bat. Another long blunt weapon. Um, I haven't obviously searched all the rooms before looting. I am looting at a bit of a risk because it's possible that I get... Oh, that's a very important magazine. This magazine allows me to use generators to generate power once the power goes out. Very important magazine. Without that, um, no, no power past power shut off. I have to make sure that, like, there's no zombies in this house that will, um, sneak up on me. Uh, Exposure Survival 4. That is one of the survival tapes. So, back to the track here. Um, that's Survival 4. And I'm gonna mark that off. As grabbed. So, as you can see, I... I've marked that off. Um, and then this list of the rare tapes, all these other tapes that aren't on these rare tapes list uh, don't provide skills. So they're just for entertainment purposes only and can be left. But these uh, exposure survival is, is definitely worth grabbing. So five comic books and... First aid two, metal work five. Don't need either of those right now. The metal shelving would be nice if I had carry capacity for it, but that's not what I'm here for. But if I wanted more carry capacity, I can make a mental note or a physical note on my map to return here later. Uh, so let's grab this curtain as a sheet. I have a lot of soap already, so I probably don't need more, but painkillers are always nice to have. And this house is uh, pretty fully looted. There's really not much I left behind that would be worth coming back for. So we can leave. Oh, uh, CDs, compact discs. Um, they're always, there's not any um, skill, like books on tape or anything like that, that you get from them. So CDs are all just entertainment flavor. None of them are gonna contain uh, useful survival information. Yeah, and there was also another metal shelf in the garage. Uh, the garage is almost... All, oh, hello. Almost always have metal shelves, so... Pretty reliable source of metal shelving. Uh, yet another Louisville map? Uh, there's nine Louisville maps in total. All the other towns only require one map to reveal the entire town. So, it would be nice to reveal... To, to find Rosewood's map... That way, I would have all of Rosewood known. 
and would make it much easier to figure out the lay of the land. But um, if you're looking for maps like that, uh, the best way is to search pockets like I've been doing, and then also to go to a gas station and go to the ma magazine racks of a gas station because magazine racks of a gas station will typically have um, uh, cartography maps. Time to eat a raw jalapeno. So I'm feeling spicy. And before I go too far, let me uh, remember to mark down the house I just cleared. Because I looted both the house. So I looted um, the house and garage. I didn't really leave anything in the garage that I would care to return for. Those metal shelves are nice, but they're a dime a dozen. They're not rare. They're not worth marking down. You can find plenty of them. So I'm just making my way back home and putting the stuff away. Oh, I should not have left that door open. Now, one last thing I wanted to mention uh, before the stream wraps up is how respawns work. Because by default, zombies will respawn, but not around you. So the way it works is that um, the map, like most large games, is broken up into chunks, which are not visible. You don't know what chunk you're in. Um, and any chunk that you have been in in the last three days is not a viable chunk for zombies to respawn in. So if you live in a city and you don't move around much, like you stay in that city, zombies aren't typically going to spawn in around you meaning that it won't be an issue. So like if I'm constantly just in the same neck of the woods in Rosewood, I'm not really gonna get a lot of respawns. Now, if I went on a, a four day road trip or longer, once I got home, zombies would respawn, but not typically on the second floors of buildings. They would mostly be spawned back on ground floor. It's possible that they wander up to the second floor, but it's, it's pretty unusual. Um, so that's the way spawns work. Um, and then that isn't to say that if you kill all the zombies around you, there won't be zombies because they also migrate. So just because you've killed all the zombies in the area doesn't stop zombies from outlying areas wandering in. Um, you can turn off zombie respawning in the options as an option to, uh, to, to have, and that would stop them from respawning at all. It's not all that feasible of an idea to try to kill all the zombies in the world. Um, it's hypothetically possible if respawns are turned off, but it's not feasible because there are like a hundred thousands of them. It would take you like a ridiculous amount of time. So I'm, I'm quickly just burning through the uh, generator book that I found because it's real important to read that one. Uh, but everything else, I'm just going to shuffle away into the shelves here. Uh, all of the added sheets that I have is going to be really nice because I'll be able to absolutely, uh, actually obscure vision from the street now by adding the sheets and dropping them. And yeah, it looks like we're nailing them to glass. And then there's these two side windows as well. So if the helicopter and a little reminder, the helicopter only shows up once. If the helicopter was to show up tomorrow, um, it would not be able to see me in this room because this room is now fully obscured from the outside. There is no vision. Nothing in that happens in here can be seen from outdoors. It's not to say that I can't make noise and draw zombies in. That's entirely possible, but at least vision has been cut. So as I move around in this room, um, zombies won't be attracted. So it's very good. And then the extra sheets that I have can be used to start doing that downstairs uh, to prevent the uh, the zombies that, that um, traipse around outside on the street from being able to see it, which will um, start to keep those windows from being smashed. And then as I get carpenter skill up and get boards, I can start either boarding or metal sheeting. I, I personally like to do boards uh, for outside windows and metal sheets for the inside. So for each... A window, you can barricade it up from the outside or the inside or both. 
Um, both obviously gives you the most protection. But the reason I like to put boards on the outside is um, when you put metal sheets, it's an all or nothing where you slap one metal sheet on and it's very high durability, but once the sheet is gone, it's gone. Whereas if you do boards, you can have up to four boards barricading up a window. And when zombies attack it, they will remove one board at a time, allowing you to perceive the damage to the barricade. Whereas a metal sheet can have one hit point left on it and you wouldn't know until it's gone. So if you do metal sheets only, um, you don't really have a concept of whether you've been attacked or not until the metal sheet is completely missing. Plus, uh, boards and nails are very common items to find, whereas, um, whereas uh, metal sheets and propane torches are a little bit less common. So I'm also choosing to use the remaining sheets that I have to hide this kitchenette a little bit more. Obviously, until I build a wall here, anything from the street can see me in this spot. And then also, in this case, there's a second floor too. So if I really want to remove all the vision from the um, grocery store, I would not only need to board up or sheet up the ground floor, I would need to board up or sheet up the second floor windows. So that's a pretty daunting task. That's a lot of square footage of sheets to, um, to deploy, but it's worth doing if we're really making this a permanent base. But now when I'm standing around here, at least I can't be seen from out there. As you can see, it's grayed out, it's blocked. I am putting away the bowls. Uh, need to put away the wood glue, except for one of them. And then what else? I'm going to keep one gas can on me so I can siphon fuel. I think realistically, uh, going to a gas station is going to be way better than siphoning fuel from a bajillion sources as a gas station will let me just do one stop and it might take some effort to clear out the gas station, some elbow grease to kill all the zombies there. But then once it's cleared, I can get, you know, a few months supply of gasoline, depending on how many gas cans I have. But friends, this is all the time I have. Thank you for tuning in to Rad's Guide to Project Zomboid, which originally streamed live on Twitch March 28th as a result of a viewer's choice poll. If you have any questions for me, let me know in the comments below, but for this series, I'm not taking feedback. If you would like to join my online gaming community, which is a great place to ask me questions about this game and others, Rodamont.com has a link to it, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for tuning in. A big thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. I really appreciate it. I hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow zombie slayers.